Hey guys, Omni here. Ryan George over at Screen Rant has dropped his pitch meeting for the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I am a little late to this, um, but we're going to be checking this out. I really like the season. I do think that the six episodes, while they were a little bit longer, did kind of force them to rush a few things. And I think that's my only real complaint about the show. Other than that, I love the action. I love the character development. And I love the way they brought this whole thing around to get Sam in the suit. So if you haven't seen it, sorry, that's a spoiler right there. But you, bro, I don't see how you could avoid it at this point. And I don't think you'd be watching this pitch meeting if you hadn't already watched the show. So whoops. Anyway, guys, I've reacted to the entire show. If you haven't checked out my reactions to it, go check those out. Got full unedited reactions of it as well over on Patreon or if you become a member here on the channel itself. But that being said, let's go ahead and dive into this pitch meeting here we go so you have a new marvel show for me yes sir i do it's gonna be called the falcon and the winter soldier okay okay what characters is it gonna follow the falcon and the winter soldier that explains the title great work so far yeah and so sam is struggling with the fact that steve rogers left him the shield right so he gives it to a museum oh okay and bucky's dealing with some government mandated therapy and hanging out with his buddy this really old guy yori nakajima oh that's cute whose son he murdered oh my god yeah well he did it while he was brainwashed and he's kind of building up the courage to tell Yuri about it as part of his recovery. So he's like trying to get over having been the Winter Soldier. Exactly. And so then the government names this guy John Walker as the new Captain America. Oh, I hate this guy already. <laughs> he doesn't seem like such a bad guy. Oh, but he's such a bad guy. Okay. But he's not that bad eventually, kind of. I, but not great. Oh, I don't know how to feel about this guy, but I'm captivated. Anyway, so then we're going to find out about this terrorist organization called the Flag Smashers. And what's their deal? Well, they want the world to go back to the way it was before everyone was snapped back because everything's all messed up now. Messed up how? Well, this organization called the Global Repatriation Council are trying to get things back the way they were before the blip because now people are living in each other's houses. There are refugees. It's a mess. And so what's their plan? Oh, well, about 20 of them have taken super soldier serum and their plan is to get out there and you, you, go get, you know, go get, go get it done. What? They're going <laughs> to head out there, go get it, get it all taken care of. I don't get what it, what? Listen, sir, they have a vague plan probably. I'm going to need you to get all the way off my back about what it is exactly. Oh, okay. Let me get yeah. that thing. Hey, yeah. So there You're right. The surprisingly young lady. I did forget Morgan to mention that. And she wears a mask and she's like mean, but you kind of get where she's coming from. It's just that her methods are questionable. Oh, sounds a lot like that Enfys Nest character from Solo, a Star Wars story. Oh, yeah, I guess it does. Hmm. We'll make sure to make it different enough. Okay, good. Who should we get to play her? How about that Enfys Nest actress from Solo, <laughs> a Star Wars story? Oh, yeah, she's great. Good call. Great. So what's her deal? Why does everybody because uh, well, she keeps saying things like our movement is strong okay it's time to make ourselves heard all right is she like super charismatic or something no she just quietly says vague things and everyone's really into that apparently well okay then so what else is going on in the show oh well we're gonna yeah. get some really important topics like racism in america oh we are yeah we're gonna have this whole storyline with this old african-american super soldier isaiah bradley that the government did tests on really heavy stuff wow well, yeah important stuff to tackle for sure yeah also Baron Zemo's going to do a little dance. What? Well, we got to balance <laughs> out some of the heavier stuff with some lighter stuff. So Baron Zemo's going to hit the dance floor. Okay, what's Zemo <laughs> doing in the show anyway? Well, Bucky and Sam realize they need his help, so they break him out of jail, and he's much sassier now. Well, great. Yeah, so they head to this city called Madripoor because they want to find out where the super soldier serum's being made. Right. And while they're there, they're going to meet Sharon Carter. She's from the movie. She <laughs> is. And there's this mysterious person in Madripoor called the Power Broker, and we don't know who it is. Is it Mephisto? What? No. Sorry, I'm still a little riled up from the WandaVision pitch. No, this power broker person seems to be a very influential person in Madripoor. They're pulling a bunch of strings. They have crazy access to stuff. Okay. Anyway, so Sharon Carter seems to be a pretty influential person in Madripoor. She's pulling a bunch of strings. She has crazy <laughs> access to stuff. Oh, so Sharon is the power broker. What? No. Uh, I feel like with the clues you've laid out, though. It's not. Mm -mm, nobody knows who the power broker is. I feel like it's pretty obviously her, though. Also, Z Zemo's gonna put on his purple mask from the comics. Oh, why does he put that on? For a minute. It's gonna look good in the trailers. Can't argue with that. And so the Flag Smashers, they start doing really intense stuff. Like, they bomb this GRC headquarters place, kill a bunch of innocent people. Oh. Carly straight up calls Sam's sister and threatens his nephews. So she's, like, full-on evil. No, actually, we're gonna act like she's misunderstood. I don't know. It seems pretty intense. Yeah, we're gonna act like she's misunderstood. You say so. So eventually, her and the Flag Smashers are gonna fight again.
against Walker yeah. and his partner Lamar, and we're going to see that Walker's taken some super soldier serum. Oh, he has. Yeah, and one of Carly's people is holding Walker because their plan mm. is to stab him to death because he's a symbol, but then Carly accidentally kills Lamar. Oh, no. Yeah, so then Walker runs over to Lamar, and the Flag Smashers, they all run away. Well, why don't they finish the job and kill Walker like they were trying to do? Well, because this part of the scene is over, so they scatter. <laughs> uh, okay. And then Walker gets all mad, and he kills that guy that was holding him so Carly could stab his heart. Okay, seems pretty reasonable. It's not actually, because the bad guy was down and a bunch of people were watching. Right, yeah, no, killing is bad, but Bucky and Sam have killed bad guys too, right? Oh no, they do for sure, but this guy was down and he was like, please don't kill me, so it's different. So maybe some of the people Bucky and Sam killed would have said that too if they hadn't died so quickly. I guess we'll never know. <laughs> because they died. Because they died, yeah. So then Walker gets fired as Captain America and he starts to make his own shield. Yeah, I bet that's gonna come into play later. Yeah, no, not really though. It gets smashed immediately when he starts fighting with it. Right, that wasn't vibranium. I guess that makes sense. It's just kind of a metal circle, really, but we're gonna <laughs> hype it up in a post credit scene. Sure, why not? So Sam is gonna start training with the real shield, you know, how to lodge it into things, how to make it bounce and come back. Yeah, how does the shield work exactly? Well, it works vibranium! It to in whatever action bit I'm writing. Okay, great, that makes sense. So anyway, by the finale, the Flag Smashers are gonna have a pretty clear objective. Oh, they are? Yeah, they're gonna kidnap a bunch of GRC senators so they can't pass a resettlement vote. And so Carly sets a truck of hostages on fire. Okay, so we're done trying to paint her in a sympathetic light, right? No, we're still trying. She's... Oh, she's <laughs> okay. And get this, we're gonna find out that Sharon is the power broker. Right, yeah, I figured that out. No, you didn't. Who else would it have... This is a big twist that I wrote. Okay. So then Sam is gonna show up, and he has this new Captain America flight suit that the Wakandans made for him. Oh, he does? Yeah, this thing's great. He's fully protected, except the top of his head where his brain is. <laughs> so he's protecting everything except your brain cage is tight. And so Sam's gonna have to save a helicopter full of hostages. Oh man, it's gonna be tough for him to take out the pilot and make sure the chopper doesn't crash. Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, it turns out one of the kidnapped senators on board that very helicopter knows how to fly the helicopter, so she takes over. Oh, hey, yeah, that worked out great. It sure did. And so eventually Carly's gonna be trying really hard to kill Sam because she's a sympathetic character, <laughs> and then Sharon's gonna shoot her dead, so it's very sad. Is it? And then Sam's gonna carry her body because it's definitely a sad moment, and then he's gonna talk to some senators. Oh, he is? Yeah, he's gonna be like, stop calling the Flag Smashers terrorists. Well, I mean, they literally used violence and intimidation against civilians in pursuit of political aims, which is, you know, the definition of terrorism. Yeah, well, Sam's gonna tell them to not say that, and then he's gonna keep lecturing them for four to five minutes. Okay. And one of the senators gonna be like, okay, but logistically, what are we supposed to do here? And Sam's gonna be like, do better, senator. Oh, you know, that does sound like it's gonna help a lot. It is. Wow, wow, wow. Wow. And so then Sam's gonna make sure that Isaiah's story gets told. Nice. And then Bucky's gonna go talk to Yuri and tell him what he did to his son. Oh, it's gonna be nice to see how that plays out. Then we cut away. Oh, yeah, we get out yeah. of fast. Kinda wish he let that moment breathe. Nope, Me I'm too. already gone before we even get to see the moment I've been building up to all season. Okay. And then during the end credits, we're gonna have the title card say Captain America and the Winter Soldier. So that's gonna be a nice moment for Sam, you know? Hasn't Bucky's whole arc been about not being the Winter Soldier anymore? Uh, yeah, I guess I could have changed his title too, huh? Whoops. Whoopsie. So what do you think? Well, it sounds great. I'm just Should not sure Captain about America and the White Wolf. Dancing thing? That seems like a weird thing to include. Well, I keep seeing this gif of Thanos twerking online, so I feel like the internet's <laughs> really gonna like it. Okay, I mean, we could include a second of it, and if people want more, we could release that online. <laughs> Hey everybody, Ryan here. Hope yeah. you enjoyed that video. And if you Dude, it, another, like another great pitch meeting, man. Ryan George is just so fucking funny. If you're not subscribed for, to Screen Rant, at least do it for Ryan George's pitch meetings if you're not already, guys. Um, so many of these things. Just You can go through a whole rabbit hole of watching his videos and it's just, you're going to have a good time. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's part of what I meant when I was talking about how some things in this the show felt rushed. You know, like the Yori thing with, with uh, uh, the Flag Smashers not actually being fleshed out because a lot of their storyline was cut. Um, because, I mean, there were seeds of it in there, of course, with Carly really being the one that was pushing things beyond what the rest of her group was comfortable with, but they had already kind of committed to that Bar and you kind of see that they were like, eh. I don't know if we ever got the guy's name, but the uh, the guy with the long hair who survived up until Zemo's bombing, 
like he was the first one to call her out on it because she's the one that escalated their methods up until that point when she bombed that building they were only stealing things and when he did that, he called her out on it. And it's like this is, and she's just like, this is the only, this is the only way they'll understand. This is the only language they understand. And he's just like, uh, uh, okay, and drives off. Maybe hoping it was a one-off. Like there's some hints in there that there was some shakiness within it, um, and they kept like kind of calling her out on it and challenging her. I mean, like the last episode when she was like, one world, and nobody said anything. And then she was like, one world. And they're like, one people. Yeah, she had gone off the deep end. Like she was beyond sympathy. But I think what she originally stood for was still kind of valid. Um, and I think that's what that was the actual message they were going with. She was a person that was pushed so far. And like I had mentioned in my reaction review that, you know, her and Walker were kind of doing similar things. They both started their paths with the best of intentions and they both strayed. Walker realized this and came back. Carly just kept escalating, just like Zemo said she would. Just kept escalating, kept escalating, and sh she got lost in her the pursuit of what she was trying to do to the point where she was kind of like tainting her own ideals. Um, and yeah, she was the villain. Like, no matter how you look at it, I think Sam who is just like a good hearted person who was like, I see the good in everybody knows that that wasn't that the final, her, her final form wasn't who she really was. And definitely wasn't who she was when she started this movement and represents the greater whole while Carly kind of became the martyr by S through that series of escalations. And in that way, I think he's kind of ignoring it to kind of hold the ideal itself that she was fighting for true. So not necessarily Carly or the way she went about it, but what she originally stood for, what the flag smashers originally stood for. Um, and I think that's, that's something you can take to heart. Did they start off as terrorists? No. Did they end up being terrorists? And at least by compliance with Carly's actions? Yes. Um, so it is a little bit of a, a little bit of a gray area on that, but uh, I I do agree with everything he said, man. Um, gosh, going back through it, man, the Sharon thing, it's like uh, I don't know. This is pretty, pretty, pretty. It, you, a lot of people, and even I fought off on it. I was like, ah, it's Sharon. Sharon wouldn't do this. Why would Sharon turn evil? She's a Carter. And the more we saw her like doing stuff, I was like, all right, well, here's more evidence, more evidence, and more evidence, the final episode. And I was like, all right, well, shit, there's, there it is. Oh, anyway, guys, what did you guys think of this pitch meeting? What did you think of the show itself? Uh, sound off the comments. Let me know your thoughts down below. We're carrying on the conversation after the video. If you haven't checked out my reactions, go do that. Huge shout out to our patron legends, Mandy Sherritt, Antoine Rodriguez, and Ryan Karen. Thank you guys so much for your support. Thank you, everybody who's been signing up over there and helping support the channel. Hopefully, we can get an editor at some point and uh, I can do more videos and cover more shows. We'll see how this whole thing goes. Uh, you guys are making all of this happen. You guys are giving me the fuel and the energy to keep on chugging through all of this. Uh, I appreciate you guys more than you know. Thank you guys so much for your support. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care, everybody.